Get ready. We'll start, guys, with Mike Bajaki and our offensive coordinator. And we'll follow up with Bill Sheridan. We'll open it up uh, for questions for Mike. Mike, uh, last year they was kind of incorporating AJ into the passing game, and he got hurt, and it kind of went away. Do you envision him using him in screens, wheel routes, flat, you know, outlet passes, stuff like that? Absolutely. I, I think the philosophy is always the more ways you can get your playmakers the ball, find ways to do it. And, and AJ is obviously one of the playmakers, so. Uh, the more different ways we can get them and get them involved and get them the ball, the better. And, and uh, you know, I, I think that helps when it comes to balance and, and tendencies and predictability. Uh, it, it's key to have him do as many things as possible. Coach, uh, Coach Adazio talked about your journey a little bit of, of starting at the, the ground level of coaching, getting NFL experience, and now coming to BC. Can you just talk about a little bit about what maybe drew you to BC and for you your your journey as a coach that from starting and, and going down to the NFL and coming here? Sure. Um, you know, growing up, I realized at a pretty early age that my playing career was going to be limited. I know that's hard to believe. Uh, so I knew that if I was going to stay involved in the game, uh, it would have to be through coaching. So I, I knew back when I was in high school, I was always going to be what I thought a, a teacher and a coach. Um, and, and that was in high school and college. That was my plan moving forward. Later on in college, I got the itch to coach college football didn't work out immediately, so I started in the classroom as a teacher and a coach, uh, teaching math at, at Del Barton School in New Jersey. Com I mean, w one of the most valuable experiences in my coaching career has been, been those two years at Del Barton, where uh, if you can learn and figure out how to command a room of, of young high school kids in the, in the subject matter of math, and then coaching football uh, with kids who have a passion for the game is, is really not that difficult. But it did help prepare me to be a teacher, and let, let's face it, that's what coaching is. It's teaching. So from there, you just you, you get very, very, very lucky along the way with opportunities and things that come up. And um, I've been blessed, uh, truly blessed, to have people look out for me in my coaching career from, from Terry Shea to Lovey Smith uh, and obviously Coach Cutter. Lloyd Carr has helped me out tremendously. Butch Jones obviously uh, had, had connections with him uh, in my time. So in a lot of ways, uh, I've been fortunate to, to be in the right place at the right time and know the right people. From there, coming to Boston College, that, that, that's a great opportunity to, for me to come home, having gone to school here in the state of Massachusetts, growing up in New Jersey. This is the closest in my coaching career that I've really been to my family in New Jersey and all. So uh, again, I, I was excited about the opportunity. The caliber student athlete at Boston College uh, is, is recruiting, uh, and, and student athlete being two operative words in, in that phrase. Uh, so when this opportunity arose and it started to materialize, uh, it was a no-brainer for me. Do you hear Dick Farley in your ear? <laughs> uh, all the time. I mean, uh, again, you're a product as a coach. You know, Coach Eric Lewis, we, we had some what we call staff enhancements uh, prior to training camp where we, we um, presented to the rest of the staff about whatever subject we wanted. And, and, and Coach Lewis, uh, as he was presenting to the staff, pointed out that he is a product of all the coaches he's worked with and played for. Uh, and that's true. I don't, I don't think there's many original thoughts in, in, in coaching, uh, whether it be a technique or a scheme or whatever it is. Um, we're, we're a product of the guys we played and coached with. And, and Coach Farley, my, my, my head coach at Williams College in Williamstown, Massachusetts, uh, a Hall of Fame NCAA coach, um, is a, a very big influence in my life. Steve talked a little bit about how um, you like to use their tight ends and the 12 personnel. You don't really see that a lot in college football anymore. How much did that attract you to here? And what do you like about the tight end group in general? It was, again, a major factor uh, as the opportunity here began to materialize and the conversations between Coach Adazio and, and I proceeded. Um, it became evident that this was the right place for me for many reasons. Uh, schematically, you know, I had been um, a coordinator for eight years at the college level. And we ran an up-tempo, uh, no-huddle spread scheme, operating from the gun, using uh, four wide receiver sets, um, spreading the field out laterally. Uh, and that was my background. And then when I went to Tampa and uh, joined Coach Cutter on, uh, as he was the offense coordinator, um, I, I learned a ton about how to utilize tight ends better in an offensive scheme. Obviously, we had had some good ones in my past with, with Travis Kelsey at Cincinnati and 
uh, in my time at Cincinnati in general, we had three tight ends that ended up playing in the NFL, and, and we, we utilized them in separate ways, in, in, in interesting ways. But, but when I went to Tampa and we had guys like Cameron Brait from Harvard and O.J. Howard and various other guys, uh, and, and, and Coach Cutter, I thought, did a great job of using those guys, I always thought in the back of my mind in, in my four years in Tampa that if I had the opportunity to coordinate again uh, at the college level, I would utilize an up-tempo team, uh, an up-tempo scheme, but I would be much more multiple in formations and personnel. So again, when, when Coach Adazio and I started talking and he told me about the depth that they had at the tight end position here prior to me coming here and how they utilize them, I, I said that's exactly what, what I, I had wanted to do and, and it, it became an easy decision. Well, you, you know, Anthony obviously has a lot of experience under his belt, and, and experience is the best developer of talent. And, and so uh, I think that alone is going to help him make a jump, okay? Um, he, he's a hard worker who pays attention to detail. The things we've emphasized this spring uh, and, and this summer in training camp uh, is becoming a more accurate passer. You know, we, we, we emphasize uh, explosives in our offense and, and – um, you know, they, they did a good job of that here at Boston College last season. We'll continue to emphasize it moving forward. Uh, and I think more precise ball location can only help in the area of explosives. And, and the phrase we use is, hey, turn those receivers into ball carriers so that they can catch in advance. And, and that's one area that, as I evaluated last year's video, Anthony, I believe, had completed a higher percentage of passes than he had ever done before in his career. But uh, I thought he could – could have done a better job of, of the pinpoint accuracy that allows guys to catch in advance, and that's been a focal area uh, moving forward. Yes? Coach, Tyler Variable, I, I understand he plays a different position than his dad, but do you see some of his dad in, in him? Well, I, I don't know his dad too well, other than the fact that he was, uh, I know, an unbelievable football player. Tyler obviously has, has the toughness in his background, has the, the football IQ. Um, and has been around the game a lot. I mean, he understands the ins and outs uh, of, of what it means to prepare like a pro and, and um, to play like a pro. So there's definitely aspects of his dad in, in Tyler's game. Are there challenges as a coach when he comes from a coaching dad? Um, or is it just, you know, he's off, he, he's, we're taking care of him, there's going to be no interference from his dad? Yeah, you know, again, I, I haven't sensed that at all. I, I think in general, to generalize uh, in, in recruiting, we love recruiting coaches' sons. Uh, I don't care if it's a high school coach's son, um, a college coach's son, an NFL coach's son. And then obviously uh, a, a player's son adds an element to that, you know, because, again, they understand uh, a little bit more of the game. They've been raised in the culture of the game. Um, and there's usually a, a – a discipline and a drive in those players that's necessary to have success at the college level. Coach, you mentioned um, helping Anthony uh, get a little bit better with his accuracy, uh, turning the receivers into ball carriers. Is that something that you just do based off of film work, or are there different drills or different? Well, it's I think an emphasis on that, and and um, you know you you can always improve with with mechanics and technique, and and uh, again that's just stuff that as he's growing as a quarterback and the more reps he gets, the more experience he gets, um, that will improve. But it, it's just a point of emphasis as we're watching video or out on the field. It's, it's, hey, all right, that was a complete pass. But, you know, and, and maybe a, a first down conversion on, on third down. Um, but we could have, we, we lost yards by not turning him into a ball carrier. So it's constant reminders. Yes. Do you see in A.J. Dillon some extra fire this year based on how last year turned out? I understand it wasn't his fault sometimes. Football's a dangerous game. Um, but does it seem like he wants to make it right and have the season? That it, that's a hard question for me to answer because I wasn't here last year. Uh, I can only speak on what he's been like since my time here. And, and his approach has been uh, very, very attentive, very, um, you know, very focused, uh, work, working um, – working hard, and, and again, I can't compare it to last year because I wasn't here, but uh, I, I think he understands. I, I do think there's a hunger there to succeed, and, and um, you know, uh, that's evident in work ethic. Yes? Coach, how do you build a relationship with the players uh, so early on in the season? Well, you know, I'll be honest. It starts with the culture that's created by the head coach, Coach Adazio. You know, he, he is 
um, he, he makes it apparent, and, and that's part of what I love in, in the brief time that I've been here and, and what I had heard about him and the rest of the coaching staff. Um, he, he makes it apparent to the players that he loves them as an individual, not, not as a football player. Uh, it goes far beyond that, okay? And, and uh, when players understand that you care for them, um, that's when growth occurs. So when you, when you talk about developing that relationship, it's a matter of investing the time um, and showing that, that you have a true appreciation for them as a person, as a student, as a football player, um, beyond just, just you know, what you're experiencing in a meeting room or on the football field. I think they're outstanding, and, and I know um, we graduated three offensive linemen last year, uh, and I remember in the interview process, uh, Coach Adazio said, uh, we're, we're losing three offensive linemen, but uh, I think we have a chance to be really, really good, and uh, I'll be honest, part of me in the back of my mind thought maybe he was blowing smoke a little bit about, oh, you know, that may, maybe he's trying to recruit me a little bit, you know. Sure enough, we get here, and he's 100% right, and, and uh, you know, Coach Troutwine and, and Coach Adazio do a great job, number one, of evaluating high school offensive linemen, okay, and number two, of developing young offensive linemen. And, and um, you know, I, 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 we've said this in recruiting and, and we say it in, in, as a staff, if you're an offensive lineman and you look at Boston College, okay, if you're an offensive lineman coming out of high school and you're looking at Boston College, you, you can't underestimate the value of having a head coach with an offensive line background um, and, the, and, and how he's going to prepare you to play the position and play the game. And, and it's evident. I mean, th those guys, those young offensive linemen are outstanding. And, and I, again, I, I can tell you what I've seen on video from last season, but I look at our offensive line, and our offense is one of the strengths of our offense. And, and, and um, around them, we can build a lot schematically, and, and even um, the mentality that you're looking for starts with those guys. Any other questions? Great. Thank you.